Hello, hello, hello! I'm Philip Magnus and I'm here to talk about Tyranny Act 2. And there's a lot to say! Indeed, it's a very good act. I would be remiss to say that it's a bad act, but I also think that it had some problems, and those are the ones I'm going to touch upon before I get to the good stuff. First off, well, I just feel the need, the compulsive need to get the negatives out of my way and out of my mind. <laughs> My greatest frustration was that I didn't get a sense of character growth when it came to my companions. Just as a tip to my first video, the companions I unlocked during Act 1 were Verse, the crazy Scarlet Chorus Assassin, and uh, Insane Dancer, and absolutely insane in the brain, I know I repeat insane a lot, but it's the only word that fits her well enough, and her Colourful personality, let's just call it, as well as Lantry, who is a sage and a scribe, uh, sages are scribes, magicians, wizards and so on and so forth, seekers of lost knowledge, blah blah blah, you know the drill. Of course, the third companion is uh, Barak, who I thought was not too interesting and a bit too dull. At any rate, during Act 1 I was promised that after major events my companions would give me a piece of their minds. Credit where it's due, they do tend to throw in a line or two, after which you get to pick an option out of three or four options and then you receive another line, which supposedly shows you what the characters think. But really, it's just so very shallow and it was not what I was led to expect, not one bit. Needless to say, that did cool down some of my enthusiasm about characters that I consider to be very well written and very well thought out. What I thought to be somewhat more unpleasant was the fact that there were no new conversations between you and your companions from the first act. That really did disappoint me in a way, because I was expecting more interactions between me and those characters, which, as I've mentioned already, I found fascinating. There was no opportunity to mock Barak's empty claims and posturing at honour and justice, and I missed that, I really did. That's for my first complaint, now to complaint number dos, the old walls. Backstory time, the old walls are the home of the Bane, which are built up and introduced as those horrifying creatures, absolutely terrifying, feared by all. How do they look like? How do they look like? I'll give you a hint. Have you played Warcraft 3? Do you remember the wasps? Yes, the night elf workers. The most harmless, most useless units in battle. That's how the Bane looks. Oh yes, they come in two variations, blue, which look exactly like the wasps, and yeah, that's right, red. Very, very impressive. Absolutely genius. I, I, I have no words for that. They are not very intimidating, not at all. And another fact about the old wells, while we're on the topic, Kairos actually forbids ever entering them, so you just expect a lot of interesting things when you decide to go and cross that law of your overlords. But no! Guess what? They are just one long boring dungeon when you fight... where? Sorry, pardon. Where you fight two kinds of enemies. Red wasps and blue wasps. Amazing. But Philip, why are we doing this at all then? I hear you ask. And the question is, there is a boss battle at the end of this grind. And it's not half bad. Granted, it's not too impressive either, and it may feel a bit annoying because of all the mobs that keep coming at you, and guess what, they are blue wisps and you guessed it, red wisps, but hey, it's a good boss battle. And so I keep telling myself to feel like I didn't waste two hours of my life grinding away, defeating workers from Warcraft 3. 
But hey, let us take a deep breath and concentrate on the good. And of course, the good, I think, is a lot more than the bad. Which is not a surprise, because I love tyranny. And I have not hidden this for a single second. So, here we go. The companions. Yes, there are more companions, and I really enjoyed two of them. The third one I didn't care about. So, the first companion, who we met during Act 1, is called Ebb. And she is a wizard. Wizardess of the Tides. I don't remember the exact name of her um, order of wizardry, but she is an interesting character who has a rich backstory and it's quite an emotional one as well. I would suggest that you look up my video of Ep, but sadly I haven't made one yet. But hey, that's something you should probably subscribe for and look forward to. At any rate, she is absolutely great. Sarcastic, she dislikes... Dislikes is a very weak word, actually, towards what she is feeling for Kairos' uh, empire. She absolutely, absolutely opposes it, hates him, and, of course, you have the opportunity to end her life, which is fun, which I obviously didn't do, because I thought she was looking awesome and she was being even more awesome, as it turned out. The next character who we are introduced to is Kills in Shadows. And I did not care about Kills in Shadows one little bit. For one, she's a beast woman, and you can call me racist, but I just don't trust gigantic furry animals with my back. Sorry, beast woman, women, women. Uh, that's threatened to go terribly off topic. <laughs> hey, am I right, ladies? At any rate, what I mean to say is that Kills in Shadows is a filthy beast woman and I do not want her anywhere near me. But I did take her up in my party. I should probably go and talk with her. Nah. And the third companion is the one who is my most favorite in, amongst the three. She is Siren. Yes, that's right. One of the Archons decides that she wants to become my companion. She is very interesting. Her backstory, absolutely abysmal, quite sad to learn. You can actually force Siren to talk with you about her backstory, which will gain you either fear or loyalty, or in my case, both. She is an absolutely fascinating character who has been through a lot. She is, I think, either 13 or 16 years old. Maybe she was 13 by the beginning of the game, I mean, during the conquest, and then at the current events of the game, she is 16. That's what I think. In case you don't know what she does, and her name is not enough of a tip, Siren has the powers to control and persuade people to do her will with her voice, with her songs which, to me, has always been one of those most awesome, most interesting of powers, of magics, of generally awesome things a person in fiction can do. And if you don't agree with me, just go and watch Jessica Jones and you will fall in love with David Tennant's portrayal of Kilgrave, who, spoilers, controls people with his voice. It's an absolutely awesome show, but I am getting distracted. Back to the good stuff. So, Act 2 is basically where you grow in power. And it's very, very exciting. For me, at least, because I love power. And I love growing in power. Ha <laughs> um, ha! That sounded weird. I don't think that joke worked out. But I'm not going to delete it, because I like transparency. At any rate, you can unlock... Not one, not two, not three, but four additional spires as optional quests during your, basically, travels. How do you do that? By finding pieces of parchment, which are scattered among different levels in the game, and solving a puzzle which is not actually that good and fun, come to think of it. I did not enjoy those. Actually, I have not done all of them, come to think of it. Maybe I should go and do that. 
Perhaps I will find the enjoyment within myself. On a serious note, they are not difficult, they're just somewhat tiresome. And if you are on occasion as lazy as I am, you can always look for the solutions ready to go on YouTube. It will take you about 35 seconds at the most. At any rate, having more spars under your control is good because that way your powers are increased. And who doesn't love power? No, seriously, who? Returning to a more serious tone, I would say that Act 2 of Tyranny had a lot of interesting interactions between characters which I'm not going to discuss for the sake of being relatively spoiler free. We don't want to give it all away, do we? <laughs> what further words of wisdom do I have for Tyranny's second act? If I had to say anything, it would be that Obsidian's artists made some really nice looking environments within Tyranny, and those are a joy to look at and a joy to kill this favor on. On to the coolest section in Act 2, and I actually have a few which I'm going to mention, not just one. The first is going to have to be the Burning Library which, of course, during the conquest, you have the choice to go to and basically pronounce an edict of fire in order to turn this amazing place filled with arcane knowledge into a burning, smoldering inferno. And that's what ends up happening, of course. At any rate, once you return to the burning library, you do so looking for the most ancient, most secret of the knowledge inside the library. And taking Lantry is actually a great idea, because he will give you a lot of information about what this inferno used to be like. If you enjoy the smell of burning books and libraries, that's where you might want to go to. It's a lot of fun. There are a few other places which make a really, really nice impression. Tunan's Court for one. Tunan, who is the Archon of Justice and basically the master of all the Fatebinders, is actually a really interesting character. If you look at Lawful Evil in the Nerd Dictionary, you'll probably see a picture of this masked creature staring right back at you with his judgy little eyes. Without going into any further details, I'm going to say that I also quite enjoy snuffing the light out of a certain rebellious traitorous Archon. That was quite a lot of fun, if I do say so myself. I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't mention that the act has one of the coolest, most empowering endings a second act of a game has ever had, at least in my eyes. With this in mind, I do believe it's time to wrap this video up and move on to Act 3. Thank you guys for watching. If you happen to enjoy this video, please click the like button, share with your friends and subscribe. Always subscribe. Good day, lad! From the conquest of the tears into disarray. By all accounts, these hostilities began shortly after your arrival. Tell us what transpired. The Fate Binder presents testimony. I warn you both against speaking out of turn. Something more than a mere disagreement unraveled this campaign. But I will return to that in time. Let us speak of Ascension Hall. From all accounts, it would seem you were instrumental in its capture, or so the petitioner of the Scarlet Chorus testifies. The disfavored commander has a dimmer view of the matter. Lend me your perspective. The edict meant certain doom if the siege failed. So why, when your survival depended on it, did you join your strength to the Scarlet Chorus and not the elite disfavored? I will consider this testimony at length. The court thanks you for it. Is there anything you wish to add at this time? Your testimony is accepted by the court. The statements of our guests raise questions in my mind. 
There is much about this campaign that has caused me to wonder. A shipment of iron weapons was short on arrival. Where coveted iron is concerned, I don't believe it to be a clerical error. One of my agents recovered this seal in Echo Call. It belongs to a merchant collective. Lethian's Crossing is teeming with their kind. If you would root out treachery, I would advise starting there. Petitioners, leave us. I would have a private audience with the Fatebinder. Ascend and join me. You will find the way opened. <laughs>